What is this? Look at the size of this monster. <laughs> This is an American restaurant called The Waffle House. I'd never heard of The Waffle House up to a few weeks ago, so this should be interesting. This is a breakfast place, and we've got all the most popular items. Don't worry, we got them. This is the menu, and by menu I mean receipt. Wow, that was expensive. Waffle House, more like money house. I actually only heard of the Waffle House because of TikTok, so thank you, TikTok. This is going to be my reaction to it. That doesn't say anything about what the items are. This is the best-selling breakfast at the Waffle House. This is a classic breakfast in America. Hash browns, scrambled eggs, and toast? What is this? Toast. <laughs> Why are these sausage patties uncooked? Like, I can see the whole cow in here. On here, we've got other very popular item, which is hash browns with eggs and beef. I think these are loaded hash browns or like a breakfast scramble. So it also looks very good. It's very much the same items in different variation. Oh, it comes with bacon as well. Okay, this is getting better and better. It's adding up. So the bacon actually... That is a good piece of bacon. I love American bacon. You can drag America for a lot of things. Their bacon is not one of those things. And last, we've got a waffle because it is the Waffle House. So I don't know what flavor this is. This is the most popular waffle at the Waffle House. What is it on the inside? We're gonna find out together. I am hungry. I love breakfast. I wish there was some kind of, maybe like ketchup. Oh, wait, there's better than that. We got some syrup for the pancakes and we've got some ketchup. You know what? I'm going to do something very American. I'm going to use a little bit of pancake syrup. This is the Waffle House pancake syrup. And I'm going to pour it on my breakfast. Don't be horrified. This is the thing that people do here. If you're American, can you confirm to the international viewers that this is something that you guys do, that I'm not making it up. Let's start with the bacon. It's probably not very crispy now because it's been a while since I picked it up. Mm, it's too crispy. Chewy and crispy. That is amazing bacon. Waffle House is coming through. Love that. These are actually eggs with cheese in it. So there's a little bit of cheddar in it. I love scrambled eggs. You know what? Very delicious. It's a good breakfast. Hash browns in America are interesting because sometimes they're like a patty. Sometimes they're just like this. It's just potatoes. And sometimes they're raw in the middle. I think these are a little bit raw. Look, I can see why they call it a potato. Mm. Greasy. Delicious. It's a great breakfast. We've been to IHOP, I think, in this series. And I really liked it as well. I think America does breakfast exceptionally well. So I'm making my own little sandwich. These sausage patties are weird because they're so undercooked. I'm still gonna try it. I just want one piece of bacon and then I guess one piece of bread on top. So we make a miniature sandwich. We get to try everything. Okay. Everything's very good. You know what? It needs more syrup. I'm so American now. Mm. I love it. I really like it. Even the weird sausage, you know what? It doesn't look great. You don't go to the Waffle House for the looks. You go to the Waffle House for the vibes. And the vibes come through. This is actually very good. It's very expensive, I will say. But very delicious. This is a scramble. It's essentially what we just ate, just deconstructed. Like, I think they just recycle the same items. Oh, wait. Is this like an omelet scramble? I don't know what this is. I think they don't know what this is either. I'm not gonna lie. It's not the most appetizing. This kind of looks like Salem's food that I cook for him. So I'm really dragging myself, but it looks really similar. No, this is the same word in different fonts, but also delicious. I was ready to drag this because this meat looks suspicious. What in the horse meat is going on here? And somehow, with the eggs, with the hash browns, I honestly think, and please correct me if I'm wrong, what makes the Waffle House so delicious is the fact that there's so much grease. There's a vegetable oil coating that just coats you, it surrounds you, it softens you up. Like this oil, this grease that is covering the whole food, it just works for me. It makes everything taste delicious. So there's no going wrong here. It's not gourmet food, it's food.
I really like it and I would 100% recommend you guys to go here if you're willing to pay a little bit extra for your breakfast. When I asked them for their best selling pancake, this is what they gave me. So we're going to pour some syrup on top. I don't know what's on the inside. Is it filled even? Like imagine the name of your restaurant is The Waffle House and then you serve waffles. Imagine the pressure in that. Wait, it's just a plain waffle. Wow, that is disappointing. That better be a great plain waffle. I really thought it was gonna be like birthday cake in the center. So this, this is it. I mean, with syrup really, this might as well be cardboard. That is a good pancake. It tastes like a pancake, really, not a waffle, to the point where I'm like, pancake. Oh wait, waffles are sometimes a little bit crispier, there's like a little crispy edges here and there. This one is fully soft. I do like it. I wish there was something fun about the waffle. Whipped cream, toppings, they were like, no, just waffles. A great start to this video. I really didn't expect to like this because sometimes with these breakfast places, you know, with Denny's, IHOP, it really depends. It can be gross and it didn't look great, but the flavors came through. So I would give the Waffle House an eight out of 10, which I was expecting this to be like a four out of 10. I was like, I'm gonna start with the Waffle House. This is gonna be comical. My favorite, probably the hash browns. Just love the crispiness of it. I wouldn't eat the whole hash brown in one go, but we got more things to try. Next up, this is possibly one of the most infamous fast food chains in America, Chili's. I'd never heard of Chili's until I came to America. Like in Europe, Chili's was a spice. <laughs> Chili's was in the spice cupboard. In America, I realized there's a restaurant called Chili's. Now, I have this weird feeling that I've been to Chili's before, but I also sat down and watched every episode in this series and I've never been to Chili's. So I made up a scenario where I went to Chili's. So this is my first time reacting to it. A really popular starter from Chili's is the mozzarella dipper. So let me show you what it looks like. Ooh. Damn, what is this? Look at the size of this mozzarella. Oh, I need to put this in the oven a little bit so that it's melty. Is it worth the effort? Oh, it kind of is. And wait, how is this a dip? This is straight up the size of a soup in Europe. <laughs> this is a dip. Then this is called the ultimate smoke combo, which is chicken, ribs, sausage. I don't know what this is. This is Chili's signature dish, which is ribs and chicken fingers and sausage. There's room for everything in here. They're like, you know what? What else? Do you want shrimp as well? For the sides, we got loaded fries with cheese and like, oh, these are going to be good. Look at the burnt cheese pieces. This is going to be really good. I want to try it already. Oh, spicy. This would have been so much better if it was fresh, but it's fine. Oh, I love the ranch. And then more sides and dessert. I'm gonna start with the mozzarella dippers and I actually put one of them in the microwave because I didn't know if it was gonna get ruined to see if it becomes stretchy. These are huge. Look at the size of this. It's very soft now. So we're gonna dip the mozzarella dipper. It's too soft, I think. I ruined it. Mm. Oh my god, I burned myself. It's too melty. It's pretty incredible. I'm gonna go for a cold one because it wasn't worth burning myself. <gasps> No, I spilled it on my new hoodie. Great, I love that for me. I knew that was gonna happen. This is a cold one. This is more like what you're actually gonna get. It's nice, it's really huge. Because they're so big, I almost prefer them to like the TGI Friday ones, for example. Quite stretchy, as you can see. And the salsa is amazing. And a good amount of salsa. A 10 or a 10 starter for me, it really is. It's a mozzarella dipper, you can't really mess this up. 
okay, Chilis? Don't get too excited. I can still come through with my inner Gordon Ramsay. I'm glad he doesn't have the prices because that's when I'm like, it's good, not that good. Let's go for the main, which is the barbecue combo. I mean, literally everything. So the fries on this side and on this side, I think this is the other sides, which maybe corn. It said something about corn, I think. I hate these boxes. Can they just not wrap the food in paper? Like, some of us are too hungry for this. Inside here, side reveal. This is a surprise for me, as it is... Oh, why does it look like that? <laughs> corn. Hmm, let me put it on this side. I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I want the corn. And the other side is... This is Texas toast. I do remember ordering this. It's also one of their popular sides. I have since filming this video been to Texas and tried one of their toasts and I can say it's a pretty good toast so you better not disappoint. Do you know when I can see the shape of the chicken on the inside and it's a perfect triangle? This is going to be dry and disgusting. It's just the wrong kind of chicken strip. Fast foodish, not very good. It's got that rubbery, you can see it. It looks like a fish out of water. Mm, no good, no. Kinda tastes like microwave food. <laughs> so this sausage also seems very undercooked. Let's dip the sausage. What? It's raw. Mm -mm. That is disgusting. I'm sorry. This sausage is so undercooked that the case is still like it's not crusty, you know the case of the sausage? If it's well cooked, it goes kind of crispy and nice and you bite into it and it's crunchy. This one is like a raw sausage. So it's like, it comes all... No. No. Now the ribs. I mean, these look pretty bad. I mean, I've recently been to Texas and tried their ribs. And by recently, I mean at some point this year. <laughs> I don't know about this. I'll be the judge of that. I know that's not how you eat ribs, but that's how I'm gonna eat it. Delicious. These are really good. Mm, I love it. It's like being in Texas again. That is very, very delicious. Ooh. The crunchy outside. Which now I know is called the bark. I love being American. This is so delicious. It almost tastes like, I don't know, like ham. <laughs> it's very palatable. As in, it's easy to eat. It's not like an acquired taste kind of thing. It's just so smoky, sweet. It's like the perfect kind of meat to eat. Let's try a slice of the Texas toast. Tastes like garlic bread. It's amazing. It's, re it's really good. Man, this does not look good. I keep my opinion. I sometimes should keep them to myself, but I'm, I'm broadcasting my opinion. Something about the way they present this, no. It's corn. It tastes kind of how it looks. Only the ribs were really like up there. Everything else was standard. I think it kind of tastes like microwave food. Like these chicken fingers, these are not real. What is this made of? Look at this. They're so undercooked and like square. It's almost like from frozen and they weren't even fried. They were microwaved. I do like their chips as well. They're a little bit um, stale just from sitting here, but the ones with the pepper and the melted cheese, it kind of, it's kind of slay, you know? Before I make my final decision, this is the cookie skillet. I think with the prices of chilies, I'm gonna be really honest, I personally would rather go to like a more local restaurant. I mean, they're not doing anything particularly well. Like if you want ribs, these are good, but there are amazing ribs at like a local specific place for ribs, probably for the same price. I think the time in history for these kind of restaurants where it's very much like, it's just the name and then it's microwave foods, it's kind of over, you know? I think now people will come here and watch my videos and probably realize they actually don't want to go to Chili's. This is supposed to be ice cream. It is now liquid. Great. They still gave me the cookie and it is a pretty big cookie and the sauce. And if this is Hershey's, I will know. I always know. It's Hershey's. Damn it, what happened to making your own anything? Make your own chocolate sauce. Oh. Do you think they bake the cookie there? There's no way they make anything at Chili's. If anyone works at Chili's, I'll create a podcast specifically for you to come spill secrets. That's an amazing idea. Mental note. What do I even do with this? Should I try it on its own? It's a good cookie. It's freshly baked. It's doughy. 
It kind of gives crumble brown butter flavor, soft in the center, not very crispy, but it doesn't need to be. I think they might have done something. I'm gonna dip it in the... I just know this is Hershey's. Look at this. Chili's, you're a restaurant. I am a house. Even when I need a chocolate sauce, I don't use Hershey's. I actually make my own. It takes two ingredients, cream and chocolate. Why can't you make your own chocolate sauce? So I dip it a little bit in the ice cream and the Hershey's chocolate sauce. The Hershey's flavor just ruins everything. Then it's just like chemicals, like maltodextrin or whatever they put in it. How do you ruin chocolate, you know? Hershey's is just not good chocolate. You're never gonna see a sponsored video between me and Hershey's. It's just never gonna happen. There's no... I was gonna say there's no amount of money. Then I thought about it. There is an amount of money. But it's unlikely. <laughs> Refreshingly honest. Don't we love that? That should be the way forward. I don't like Hershey's chocolate, so I don't really like the sauce here, but I really like the cookies. So overall, I would give Chili's a 6 out of 10. Would never go there again. Sorry, America. I know it's an American staple. Not in my house. So this is a bag from an American restaurant called Culver's. 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 Hmm. And Culver's speciality is... We're about to find out. Oh, fish and chips? Is this American fish and chips? This isn't expected. I really didn't expect this from this place. It's fish and chips. And it looks kind of like the British fish and chips. I'm so confused. Wait, this looks kind of good. Love a crinkle fry. Love a potato roll. Potato roll? Then here we've got some tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Boom Boom Sauce, a giant fork, and coleslaw. This coleslaw has been sitting in this bag for so long that it's probably kimchi at this point. There's more? Oh, they also make burgers? And more? Please, please stop. These are cheese curds. So these are kind of like fried cheese pieces, I think. And then these are called the Culver's Cement. Concrete? Concrete. A concrete mixer. Like, is it concrete? Because it's like you're building a house with concrete. And it's like, that's the texture. Let's start with the cheese curds. It's like a whole bag of these little cheese bites. Amazing. And it comes with this Ken Steakhouse Boom Boom sauce. Oh. Yeah, I get the boom part. Spicy, but amazing. It's like this spicy, it's almost like a spicy version of the Chick-fil-A sauce. Oh, can't talk about Chick-fil-A. I've never been. I don't know that restaurant. I would never support evil corporations. I say this in the middle of filming this video. I am in the evil corporation headquarters. Personally, this boom boom sauce, it's too spicy. I would be happy with the boom sauce. Boom boom. Too much. Now, why does Culver's make a good burger? It's so beefy. <laughs> what a beefy burger. Like, that literally looks like a cartoon burger. Like, they run out of ink or something. They run out of interns to draw the details on the burger. So it's just a brown, <laughs> a brown burger. Why does it look like a burger from Bob's Burgers? That is a good burger. The sauce on it is basically the same as like a cheeseburger from McDonald's, just ketchup, pickles, just the basic. But I actually find the meat really enjoyable. It kind of reminds me of the beef patties from Burger King. It has kind of like a flame grill kind of flavor to it. Which is really refreshing, but it's such an ugly burger. <laughs> it's so ugly. Like, what is this? There's no one else of color, no green. It's just like, a, the cow is just staring at me. Just like, I don't know if I like this. I would say I find the flavors of this really, really enjoyable. I think this one makes my top 10 of burgers in America. That's pretty good considering how many I've tried. I really, really do like it. It's just, they gotta make this pretty. I don't, oh, there's mushrooms in it and pickles and onions, but the whole thing is like gray. Guys, it's the least appetizing burger in America and it tastes so good. I actually feel bad. The personality is giving. The looks, I really, really want to eat the whole thing. This is an amazing burger. 
I've liked everything so far. This is one of the most underrated fast food places in America. How is it not more popular? I've never heard of it up to filming this. Now onto our American fish and chips. I am so excited about this. I haven't had fish and chips since I lived in the UK, which was a long time ago. So let me prepare the tartar sauce. I can be very critical of fish and chips because I've had so much when I lived in London. Like so, so much. Most of them, not great, from pubs. The chefs were probably drunk and somehow they taste the best. Some of them at 3 a.m. from a really sketchy place, they fried fish and sausage in the same oil. Also incredible, 10 out of 10. Let's see what American fish and chips is giving. It's giving, oh, like a cloud. Fishiness, zero, which I love. It's just like, just texture, no thoughts, just vibes. This is so delicious. I, oh, this is so good. Hmm. Culver's kind of sounds like a bad fast food place, almost like a, an Arby's or something where you just go in and out and get like something quick. But the food is so well prepared. This tastes like restaurant quality food. I don't know how much I paid for this, but I'm gonna say it's worth it. The portions are amazing. Even the fries are good when they're stale. Are you kidding me? Let's make a little sandwich. Let's do a few fries for crunch. Oh, I feel like I'm messing up. Some tartar sauce on top of it. One more fry. And the lid. Perfect. I love this. This fish is a 10 out of 10. I really want to finish this whole pieces of fish, but I gotta stop myself at one because we have so many things to try and I really want to give everything a fair attempt. So these are the milkshakes they are known for. One of them is a blueberry, the other one is a brownie pieces. Wait, this is not brownie pieces. It's yellow. I'm so confused. Let's find out what it is. Maybe they gave me a free one. So this one is the blueberry one, I'm assuming. I'm so colorblind. Blueberry. Oh, wow. It's almost like a blueberry muffin blended into here. It's very textural to the point where I'm like, is it too textural? <laughs> Do I wish this was more like a smoothie? Because it's very like, you have to bite into it. You have to use your teeth. You have to actually work for it. I do really like the flavor of it. Hmm. Pumpkin? Oh, that is dangerous. That tastes like you know the pumpkin sauce that they use at Starbucks that they put into your pumpkin spice latte? This tastes like you're eating the sauce. You know when you get the bottom of the drink and syrupy and velvety and it's so good and you're like, ooh, that was too good. Too good to be enjoyable. This is that. I wonder if I can drink this because I'm obsessed with this. Mmm. You can drink it. Oh, it's so sweet. This is straight up brown sugar meets pumpkin, meets cinnamon sugar cookie. It's so delicious. This really is delicious. Hear me out. I'm gonna do something silly and goofy. This one's too thick so it won't come up. Let me try again. I think I invented something. That tastes like pumpkin blueberry is strange. They don't blend the flavors, but it's also not offensive. I think I just invented Tutti Frutti. I reinvented it. Culver's, for me, is a solid 9 out of 10. It looks very fast foodish, like the branding and everything, but the food is well made. I cannot wait. I'm gonna put this in the fridge, and tomorrow morning, the way this fish is gonna be my breakfast, first thing I eat in the morning, it tells me something. This is a 9 out of 10. It's almost perfect. I wish I had a cowboy hat, because next up we've got Texas Roadhouse. This is highly, highly requested by you guys. What is up with Texas food? being so popular. I already know there's gonna be so much food. Anytime Texas is in the name of a restaurant here in America, run. It's like, if you think the Cheesecake Factory serves big portions, run. It's bigger in Texas. A whole lot of sauces, they don't play around. Texas said dry, not on my watch. So what is this? A bag of bread? <laughs> it's just a bag of bread. So much bread. I mean, I will happily freeze this and eat this for the next four weeks, but this is it's too much. Did I pay for this? An extra fresh baked bread with honey cinnamon butter? Oh, wait a second, because this is adding up now. 
honey cinnamon butter bread. Here we've got half a slab of ribs with baked potato and buttered corn. We've got the ribs, the potato and the corn. Everything smells very good. And then on the side, we've got a sweet potato loaded with honey cinnamon caramel. What? <gasps> it's a marshmallow sweet potato. It smells like cinnamon. I'm so confused. Is Texas a real place? I've been there and I don't know myself. And here we've got, this is called a rattlesnake bite. A what? <laughs> These are called rattlesnake bites. I thought there was like an injury. Why is there like a worm flying from it? That's so weird. It's like corn, jalapeno in the center. It's very cheesy. I've never had anything more weird than a rattlesnake bite. Why do I want more? Wow, these rattlesnake bites are so spicy. And I love spicy food, but I had one and I'm sweating. These are dangerous. They're a 10 out of 10 in flavor because it's rich and cheesy. They're also a 10 out of 10 in spiciness. First thing I want to try is the bread with... No, that's not cinnamon butter. I was promised cinnamon butter. That's cinnamon butter. So the Texas Roadhouse kind of sends you a little bit of cinnamon butter, which I'm assuming is the reason why they sent an extra, I think I didn't pay for the extra dozen breads. They just gave it to me for free. Just 12 breads, just like that. I feel like people in Texas, you can hear mixed things about every place in America. And obviously I had like preconceived ideas of what it was gonna be like. When I went to Texas, I was scared. I thought someone was gonna shoot me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it what it is. Shoot me with extra foods and extra niceness and room upgrades. People in Texas are so nice. It's like unreal. It's one of the places in America where I'm like, I think if I lived here, I would be a bad person. I'm not as nice as everyone else here. We're gonna try the bread. It's a good texture with the cinnamon butter. Obviously, if you're at the restaurant, this will be warm and it'll be amazing. I would love this as a kid. I'd be like this, watching cartoons. That would be literally my ideal snack. This is a really good roll. It's toasty, it's very toasty. There's this brown, almost like sourdough. Not being sourdough, obviously, but that tangy sourness, bitterness, amazing. And the cinnamon butter is not too sweet, so it's kind of like sweet, savory-ish. And you know what the best part about the whole thing is? It kind of erased the flavor from the rattlesnake bite. That is crazy spicy. That's why it's called a snake bite. It bit me. Let's try the corn. This is just regular corn, I think. Just regular good old corn. Pretty good. Actually, very good. It tastes like barbecue. How? Why? And then we've got a potato. So this is like a whole potato. How do you eat the potato? Should I just bite into it? Not me eating like a medieval. Is there ranch anywhere? That would be great actually, right now. Is this ranch? I'm gonna dip the potato in the seemingly ranch. I honestly don't know if this is ranch. This is truly the seemingly ranch. I don't think it's ranch. They also send extra cheese in case you wanna put on top of the potato. Like if you wanna open it and not eat it like a medieval. We can do that. We can put the cheese on top of the potato. Oh, it's got onions as well. See, that looks a lot better. That's what I should have done from the beginning. Let me show you. Okay, that actually looks so good now with the cheese and the onions. And it's just potato. We are here for the ribs. Everything so far has been amazing. Oh, look at the way the ribs just fall apart. Look at this. I can't even hold it. Look, I'm gonna just remove the bone. Oh, the bone just comes off. Let's give it a try. I just melt. Mm. Bone. The only thing is I wish I was wearing gloves. The second thing is, I wonder what the cinnamon butter would taste with the barbecue ribs, mixing their two most popular items. Let's find out. Let's put a barbecue rib, the butter, you just bite it. It strangely is delicious and you can taste the cinnamon and the barbecue sauce, 
Could I have more barbecue sauce? Oh, these are beans. Never mind. All in all, amazing so far. The only thing I didn't try is the beans. So... There's like meat in it. Mm, there's the bitterness of the beans that it's not my favorite thing. Everything else so far has been incredible. I'm not crazy about the marshmallow soup potato, the idea of it, but I will try it. Sometimes with some very American dishes, it was hard to like adjust to that kind of taste level. This is so well made that you don't have to adjust. Like even though I didn't grow up in America, my palate was not trained to eat this. Like this sticky, smoky barbecue ribs. This is done in such a delicious, balanced way that the European mind can comprehend. <laughs> it was really good. Now, why do I gotta eat sweet potato and marshmallows? Like, why? Why is there hairs in the sweet potato? Guys, I'm not sure about this. I don't wanna drag Americans, but this is just something that I, I, I can't comprehend this. Why do you guys put marshmallows on sweet potato? Why, why can't you just eat the sweet potato with olive oil, salt, and pepper? It strangely goes. When you put marshmallows in a sweet potato, it makes sweet potato taste like ice cream. How did you come up with this in first place? Why did you put marshmallows on the potato? Why did you do that to the potato? Well, the potato was doing just fine. Why did you have to go and put the marshmallows in the damn potato? Does no one care about the rights of the potato? But anyways, you guys did that. And it kind of slays. I hate to be honest, but I would never eat this. Just out of principle. This is where I draw my cultural boundaries. Marshmallows. Eat the marshmallows, eat the potato, leave some space in between. But I hate that I like this. Enough. Enough of this. I will admit, I must have been living under a rock not to know about Texas Roadhouse because it's very good. It's very, very good. But overall, I would give the Texas Roadhouse an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed everything. Everything was done well, flavorful, simple but amazing. So, well done, Texas Roadhouse. Next up, we've got this place called Pollo Tropical. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. You know what? I don't know what kind of food this is. I wouldn't say Mexican, but it might not be. That's a big bowl of food with a little sauce that I have no idea what it is. These two items was a total of $24, okay? It's not too bad. This is the best selling dish from Pollo Tropical, which is a Pollo Time, which is half chicken with yellow rice and black beans. And this is what it looks like. This is so, so heavy. Oh, oh my God, it's a whole chicken. Wow, didn't expect that. And then here, these are fried plantains. I think it's offensive to call this a banana, but I think a fried plantain is kind of like a, I want to say fried banana, but I think this is offensive, so sorry. And here we've got some fried yuca. So this is, I think, cassava is the name of the vegetable. I think I've made this before for some kind of video. So this is a fried yuca. I generally love yuca because it stays crispier for longer than potato chips. So listen to this. I don't even know where to start here. I guess we can start with uh, the rice and the beans. So I'm gonna actually pour the beans next to the rice. I want all my foods touching. Oh, I just know it's gonna be good. I love black beans because it reminds me of Brazilian food, which is something that I love. It also comes with a roll on the side. So you can make like a little chicken sandwich maybe, which honestly, that might be what I'm gonna do. Let's see. You know what? Let's start with the chicken leg. So this is the chicken. Let's do a little bite of the chicken leg. Okay, quite plain. There's nothing too crazy about the flavor of this. Kind of reminds me of a Walmart rotisserie chicken. It is also not very expensive for half a chicken, so... But it's well cooked, it kind of falls apart a little bit. It's a little bit dry. I just wish there was some kind of flavor, like a piri-piri kind of flavor would be amazing. Maybe a mango spiciness to it. Maybe like a Caribbean kind of seasoning. That would have been just something exciting. But we'll try it with the rice and the beans. This is yellow rice, which... Oh, the rice is amazing. Mm. Maybe they saved up on the seasoning for the rice because the rice is like garlic, onion, like vegetables. It's really good. So I'm going to do like a little sandwich of everything because I think that's why they send you the bread. So I'm gonna do rice, and then I wanna kind of want to get the lean parts of the chicken because I am 12 years old, and this is the part of the chicken that I enjoy. So, 
Let's see what it tastes like. So we've got a little Pollo Tropical sandwich. That is like carbs on carbs. I love it. <laughs> they also make sandwiches, but the lady said this is the most popular item by far. So far, it's quite a mid restaurant. There's nothing here that is really, you know, like that makes me want to go there, drive all the way there. Why did that automatically dip in the beans? So this is a fried plantain. That is delicious. I would go there for this. Mmm, with the beans, oh my God. This is very good. Now this is like a solid 10 out of 10. And I think that is enough reason for me to actually want to drive there and I would order this. Maybe, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open this and I'm going to put in one of the fried plantains because I just, I love the flavor with the beans and one of the fried yuca just for texture. Can you close this? Probably not. It's never stopped me before. That's good. Sticky, but very flavorful now. So much better than just a chicken. This is what I would like to call a mid fast food place. When it's like, for example, the plantains are amazing, but everything else is very like, just enough, you know? There's so many options and so little money these days to spend on food. I feel like places like this, they're not doing the most, not giving you the best quality on every single item. I don't think these places are gonna be very successful, at least in the current situation of the world. I personally would not spend my money there just because I don't find it worth it. So this is the dessert. This is a, a flan, flan, a flan, a pudding, a, put, a flan pudding. Guys, I don't know. I'm trying my best. Don't cancel me. Maybe we go like this. And then, I am so clever. Look at the way I know things. And then you peel this off. And then the air is gonna make this. Oh, I mean, we got it. It's jiggly, it's here. And I have no spoon, so we're gonna eat it as it is. Amazing. Wow. Kinda tastes like this syrup from bubble tea. Like that caramel syrup from the bubble tea. Not the pearls, not the milk. The syrup, it tastes like that. It's like... That was my favorite. Oh, it's on the beans. My second favorite. Man, I was having such a good day. Oh no, it's falling apart. It's falling apart. <sighs> Everything was going too well. The flan was actually delicious. I can't eat the beans now. Pollo Tropical, I would give this a six out of 10. That seems fitting. It's mid, like I said, but good, but mid. The name of this place is Portillo's. I honestly have never heard of this until Google Maps told me that this is a popular fast food chain. Wow, that is a big order. I thought it was a tiny order and then I'm like, that was $29. So let's see everything that we got from Portillo's. So I think this restaurant specializes in hot dogs, which is interesting because it's actually not very popular here in America, go to a restaurant and getting a hot dog. It's usually like a sports game from what I've experienced and observed. We've got this, 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 this. honey mustard, this, this, this. Okay, first of all, I will say that I'm kind of obsessed with the aesthetic of this place. This is really, really cute. And then the sauces are also like branded. I love attention to detail when it comes to the packagings. Now here, we've got the cheese sauce, what I'm assuming is for the hot dogs. And this is the hot dog. This is the money maker. This is what they sell. This is their bread and butter. No, honestly, it is bread and butter and a hot dog. Why is it so wet and hard to unwrap? Talk about suspense. This is so wet. This is the most moist. Oh, oh, what is this? That's not a hot dog. This is a beef and cheddar croissant. Oh, why does it look like that? First of all, it's like an underbaked croissant and then on the inside, it's... Why does that look like straight out of Arby's? I have to be honest. 
When meat looks gray in America, I can't. Why does he look like this? And why does he feel squishy? This is the hot dog and so tiny and wet. You guys are not ready for this. Get ready for the wettest hot dog you've ever seen. It's wet. Do you see? I mean, it might taste good, but it doesn't look very good. It's kind of poorly made. It's got all these toppings, but it... This is the worst hot dog I've ever seen. The bread is soaked. Look at the bread. I'm not expecting much here, but I do want my food to be dry. But let's start with the hot dog. Look at this. It doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. It is what it is. It's squishy and wet. When I bite into this, is it gonna make wet sounds? Anyways, let's put the pickle in it to distract from the wetness. Damn it, that's a good hot dog. The bread is strangely wet, but overall it kind of works. It does need something like a cheese sauce or something because it's a bit plain. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's a beef sausage. It's not a big hot dog. Look, I gave two bites to this. How is it halfway through? I will say this place, the portions are not huge, but it's very good. It's kind of worth it. It's strangely wet. I don't get this. Maybe you need to eat it as soon as you buy it so it doesn't steam. Now, what about this? A beef croissant. Oh, man. Why does the beef gotta be like that? Why is the croissant underbaked? Damn, that's so good. Everything in here is very soft and underbaked, which is strange. I like something with a bit of a crust and sturdy, you know? The textures might not be your favorite, but the flavors, there's no hiding the flavors. And the flavors are here. The cheese is amazing. The beef is amazing, kind of like melts. And the croissant tastes incredible. It's not really a croissant. Like it tastes like a, a potato roll. That's what it tastes like. Very doughy, soft, plain. It doesn't have the layers and the butteriness of a croissant. It's just a potato roll shaped like a croissant, which is okay. Each to their own. Prefer a regular standard croissant, but you know. And then we got the chicken fingers, which I am going to try. I'm going to try this with the honey mustard. Chicken fingers is my Roman empire. Honestly, I think about this every single time I go to any fast food place. Why is it so dark? It's low key giving chocolate. That's an amazing chicken finger. I love it. Oh man, it's so good. It's perfect. It tastes like real chicken, not like, you know, like a blend of chicken and nerves and fat and like squishy and then shaped into a chicken shape. This is amazing. This would even be good with the hot gardiniera sauce. Oh, if it's too spicy. Oh, it's almost like a butter. It has the consistency of a butter. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Like, plain? A very underrated thing for chicken fingers that I always take in consideration is the breading. And this one, there's so much pepper on every corner of this. So every bite you do get like that spice, that hit. It's very, very good. Let's try the fries. Good fries. It's a bit stale now, but I can tell how crispy they must have been. They still taste really good. These are amazing fries. They're just like, you know, crinkle cut, but I like them. I was horrified that everything felt wet and now I love everything. I just, I'm sorry, I don't want to be basic and like chicken fingers is my favorite food because I do try to keep an open mind and give other foods a fair chance. But look at this, look at a chicken finger. A chicken finger is elite. A chicken finger is, <sighs> guys, who else possesses this capacity, this hold, the cultural choke hold that the chicken finger possesses on society. And it should. It is the perfect food item. It's amazing. It tastes great if you're an amazing chef. It tastes good if you're an average chef. There's no such thing as a bad one. Chicken fingers from this place, better than the hot dog. But the only thing we have to try is the dessert. Let me move away my wet hot dog. That sounds 
interesting. So this is a strawberry shortcake and it's cake with jam and then cream on top. It's very promising. Let's give it a little taste. Oh, layer of cake, you can't even see it. And then there's some strawberry jam in the back and then whipped cream. Amazing. Mmm. It's not just strawberry jam, there's real pieces of strawberry in it. Oh, they ate. They ate. Somebody cooked here. <laughs> Honestly, somebody cooked here. Somebody cooked. Oh, this is so good. I'm not even a crazy dessert person. I can eat this whole thing. Give me five seconds. I literally, time lapse, I'll just smash this whole thing. Just so you guys don't say that I'm lying, do you see a real piece of strawberry in it? There's like real strawberry pieces in it. It's not just the jam that has chunks in it. In my head, it was giving like a, a five out of 10 when I looked at it. And then as I started to like go through the food, I'm like, wait a minute, somebody kind of cooked here. It started to get really close to a seven and then it went to an eight. And I'm like, I think Portillo's is a solid eight out of 10, which I didn't see coming. Amazing fries, amazing chicken fingers, amazing hot dogs, and the croissant, I know, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes and eat it, it tastes amazing. Well done, America, thank you. And there we go, another installment of American fast foods that I've never heard of. And at some point, are we going to run out of restaurants? What do you guys think? Like, we've done so many episodes by now, and I'm like, there's still so many that you guys, whenever I get a recommendation from you guys, I'm like, I didn't know this place existed. And then I Google it and it's next to my house. Just the wonders of living in America. So let me know if you guys want more episodes of this series. I'm going to assume yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it, but give the video a like, honestly, don't be shy. I really appreciate it. With content like this, where I have to go to many fast food places and sort of plan it, it really does help me having you guys' support. And it's not just like, I just want to look at the number of likes on a video and feel happy about it, feel content. It's nothing to do with that. It's weird to explain, but it makes me feel like I'm making content for someone, you know? That there's someone on the other end and that makes it more fun for me. Like sometimes if you think that no one's gonna watch it or that people are not engaging with the content, in my brain, I think, let's just not make this anymore. Let's just quit. Let's just quit YouTube altogether. So those of you who leave comments, engage with the videos, I really think of you whenever I make these videos. You are the person that I'm talking to. I also appreciate the silent watchers, but those of you who engage with the videos, I really, it really means a lot to me. So thank you. This is a really truthful thank you from the bottom of my heart. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe, switch my notifications on. I love you and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.